Let's move on to the issue of transgender rights. Is it your position, Melanie, that we've gone too far in accommodating people who feel their gender identity and their biological sex don't match? Well, I think that anyone who is in a situation of gender confusion should, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, merit sympathy um, and understanding. Um, but I also think that uh, we've got ourselves into a situation where um, there is uh, a body of um, pressure uh, behind the cause um, associated with transgender uh, issues, which seeks to basically write biological sex out of the script altogether, uh, to basically say that if I were to say, I am a woman, uh, that is somehow an causing offence to somebody who is in a say, state of gender confusion. Now, I think, I think that is not only absurd, um, but, and is not only sort of <clears throat> draconian and even totalitarian, uh, but it, I mean, it, it is, it is de denying me my right to say what I am, which is a woman. Do you think that is what's happening? I don't think that is what's happening. I think what's happening, it's all about equality. It's all about recognising that uh, some people self-identify as a different gender and they should be given the opportunity to do that. And I think it's the kind of society that we want to live in, in terms of looking after people's mental health and well-being and just saying that we need to be um, mindful of uh, people's circumstances and what they're going through. And I don't think well, that... I agree with that. Term. I agree with that. I think we should be mindful and we should be compassionate and considerate. Right, so but where's that's the not problem? What's, that's not what's happened. If you look at the proposal for the census, uh, the, um, uh, the, the proposal census. that people should not be required to say whether they're male or female, um, the proposal, um, the, 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 the sort of consultation uh, document says that it was thought um, to be um, irrelevant, unacceptable and intrusive to be asking about sex. But the crucial point is this, the option of adding a third choice of other, male, female, other, was considered problematic because it was thought to homogenise trans people and differentiate them from the rest of society. Now, so here you have a situation where, in my view, that's what should happen. If the, if the census people, if people are concerned that transgender people don't find a place in the census uh, questionnaire which simply says, are you male or female, fine, have other. But no, you can't have other because to have other would somehow cause offence. In which case, I cannot say on the census, or, or, or no, I can say on the census that I am a woman, but the census overall will no longer be reliable as the principal source of statistical information about men and women in the country. And isn't that that a, can't be right. Is that a problem for uh, planning, for services going forward, if you cannot have reliable figures about who is the male and who is female? and those that identify as neither. Absolutely, but I mean, I'm not quite sure if this is a concrete proposal. And I think it's about terminology. So I, as I understand it, having read it, I read it that it wasn't about, they were going to change the language of sex to gender. And so you, it's not that you'd be denying saying whether you're male or female, um, or either it would be just changing the language from sex to gender, which I agree with. I don't think, I think it's important that uh, we understand what the makeup of the country, both in terms of male, female, transgender, it's important that we understand. And, and I also think it's important to kind of note that um, Ensuring that somebody has their equal rights doesn't take away from anybody else's equal rights. So equality is equality, and that, and that's where we should come from as a base right. understanding. I mean, clearly, Melanie, as the trans community gets more awareness in the wider community, there are going to be more people, and there are more people now, seeking treatment at a relatively young age. Is that, isn't that long overdue? Well... <laughs> It may well be uh, that uh, there was treatment that such people require that they weren't getting, in which case I'm very glad if they're now getting it. What worries me, however, is that as far as specifically as, specifically as far as children, for example, are concerned, uh, what is often a, a passing phase uh, of thinking that you're of the opposite sex and which passes uh, quite normally um, is being medicalised. Um, and these children are having a label hung round their neck and inappropriate medical intervention is taking place. That's what worries me. That takes away the right of a child just to be a child. Right. Is there too much um, sort of medical invasive surgery that is being offered or could be offered in future to children who are too young to be certain about whether they want to change gender? I don't think we're anywhere sort of near that point at the moment. I think the... Um, the Gender Recognition and the Equality Act 2010 needs to be 
updated. I think that it's too simplistic to say that it's just a passing phase. And as I said, I think we have to be mindful in regards to how people feel and the journey that they're going through in terms of their sexuality and how we talk about it, how we address those situations has to be done with care and compassion every time we have a conversation about it. Right. So. Do you think people who are uncomfortable with or sceptical about this issue, who may say it is a passing phase or there's just too much noise um, around transgender or gender issues in general. Do you think some of that is transphobic in your mind? I think that every time we get to a point where we're talking about somebody else's equality rights, there's an uproar. It's about women, there's an uproar. When it's about black people, people of colour, there's an uproar, uproar. Now it's about transgender people, there's an uproar. And I really think we just need to take it, uh, as I say, with care and compassion as we talk about these issues, as we talk about the act that's coming before Parliament, and we make sure that everyone feels comfortable talking about where they are in themselves. Right. Melanie? Well, the only people who won't feel comfortable are people who are likely to be called transphobic if they say they are men or women. And if they say that certain people are men or women, if, if, if somebody gives birth, it's not a pregnant person, it's a pregnant woman. That person who says it's a pregnant woman is likely to be called transphobic, and as we saw with the case of Germaine Greer, is likely to be howled off the stage. This is a weapon for a very authoritarian, very intolerant uh, set of attitudes masquerading as compassion. All right, we're going to leave it there because I want... No! Jace, what do you think? No! <laughs>